Hi, Gracie. Hey, what's that I smell? Oh, hello, Harry. Two cakes, huh? Mm -hmm, but we'll only be able to eat one. What do you mean? Well, every time I bake a cake, I leave it in the oven five minutes too long and it starts to burn. Coming! Oh, Harry, don't stop stirring this or it'll spoil. But, 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 Gracie, I'm in a hurry. Yeah, well, stir it fast. I'll be right back. <laughs> Okay, but you be careful now. Don't you fall in. Joe, do you think they'll remember us? Are you kidding? We played four or five shows a day with them in Akron. How could they forget us? Yes? Honey! Oh. Oh, sweetie! Oh. <laughs> now, who did you want to see? Joe and Molly Pearson. Oh, they don't live here. The last time I saw them was in Akron. <laughs> so look, Gracie, we're Joe and Molly Pearson. Remember? Da 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 was that before or after we were married? It will be five bucks. Oh, come on, sit down. Oh, it's so good to see you. What have you been doing? Oh, still in Baltimore, traveling around, doing the same old skating act. Ten years ago, Molly had a baby. Since then, it's been four and five a day. Oh, my goodness. Where do you keep them all? <laughs> no, no, crazy. Joey Jr. is our only child. We brought him with us. Oh. He's around and back looking at your swimming pool. Oh, oh really? Forgotten where the red goes, goes, my home to you. Yeah. Oh. Baby kiss. Oh. Joe, am I glad to see you. Oh, Josh, that's Molly. Joe's over here. Thanks. <laughs> hey. Joe, how are you? Fine, George. Come on, Molly. I want to meet little Joe. Oh, yeah. Sit down, sit down, Joe. Thank you, George. So you have a little son, huh? Yes, I well, have. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Gee, George, long time no see, huh? A lot of years. Remember the old days when you didn't have enough money to buy food? I'll never forget them. <laughs> you used to cover everything with ketchup. You put enough ketchup on a telephone book, it tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny now, but it wasn't funny then. Starving half the time, drafty dressing room, broken down train. Yeah, I'd leave Brooklyn and then go to Altoona, and then back to Brooklyn, and then to Schenectady, and then back to Brooklyn, and then to Mechanicsville. Well, wait a minute. Why did you always go back to Brooklyn? Bigger telephone books. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, son. George, <clears throat> this is little Joey Jr. This is Joey Jr.? Didn't I tell you that nobody could throw a straight line like George Burns? George, he never misses your television show. Really? That's right, Mr. Burns. I can even do an imitation of you. When I grow up, I want to be just like you. Oh, Joey, call me Uncle George. Okay. Uncle George, would you blow some smoke for me? Blow some smoke? Sure, will you please? All right. What timing? <laughs> the den, Joey. I'll let you look at some of my scrapbooks. <laughs> Joey is right. <laughs> That's the whole story. Oh, I was telling Gracie, I wish we could get Joey Jr. to forget about show business. We don't want the kid to grow up in a skating act. No, we want him to go to college. Become something. Yeah, like a doctor. You know, show business is too hectic. Why, when Joey Jr. was born, I almost didn't have time to get to the hospital. Oh, my. It was lucky you did, though. Otherwise, some other woman might have taken him home. Uh, Gracie, do you mind uh, if we leave Joey here for a few hours? Molly and I would like to go out and look up some good business to get into. Oh, sure. I'd love to. Uh, Come on, I'll show you to oh, the well, door. Oh, that's wonderful. You know, the well, well, I know it. Well, oh, Harry Morton, you're stirring it the wrong way. You're unwinding it. <laughs> Look, Grace. Oh, the first cake's burning. The other one must be done. Oh, hello, Grace. 
Auntie. Gracie, I didn't know you were going shopping. Oh, I had to go downtown and get a few things. Oh, and I picked up your hose. Oh, well, thank you, sweetie. Oh, and wait till you see what I got Joey. Oh. What? To sail in the pool. Oh, dear. Oh, now, say, Isn't that's that real nice. Yeah, I try to get one in a bottle, but they just don't have them. Mm, I want it to be nice and fresh. <laughs> well, maybe now that Joey has his boat to sail, he won't be running up to the attic every few minutes to look at George's scrapbook. Yeah, I'll go show him how to sail this. We'll have some fun. I'll see you. Yeah. Where should we answer the door? Hi. Hey, George, come on out and join us at the pool. Mrs. Burns? Yes? I am Emily Beecher March, child guidance counselor. Oh, yes, I phoned you. I am affiliated with the Spencer Foundation. Oh, well, you don't look affiliated, but come in, Mrs. Burns, the Spencer Foundation is for children. Oh, no wonder it's tied on you. Now, Mrs. Burns, you phoned me, and you said there was a ten-year-old boy here, and you wanted help with his vocational guidance. Oh, yes, this little, um, uh, Joey Pearson is crazy about being an actor, but I've decided that he ought to be a doctor. Oh, well, planning a future is always difficult where boys and girls are concerned. Why don't you have Joey in here now, a and we can uh, see what he's best suited to be? Well, you'll find he's best suited to be a boy. <laughs> well, well, sure. I his clothes are all wrong for a girl. Where is Joey, Mrs. Burns? Oh, he's out by the pool. But before I call him in, I'd like to know more about this. Oh, all right. When I first got into the foundation... Uh, no, wait. <laughs> when I first joined this room, I learned that through a series of tests, one could ascertain, as in a case like this, a child's natural abilities and talents to become a doctor. Have I made myself clear? Mm, you certainly haven't. Uh, I want to know what happened before you got into your foundation. <laughs> Mrs. Burns, if you don't mind, I think I'll go out and talk to the child. Oh, all right. He's out by the pool with my husband. My husband's the one with the cigar, and the one with the boat is little Joey. <laughs> Mr. Burns. Yes? May I speak to you for a minute? Yes. Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns, I've been with your wife for some time, and I... Well, I, I don't know how to say this to you. We've been married for 25 years, so you can speak freely. Well, frankly, I think she's a bit peculiar. I hope so. I wouldn't want to go back to shining shoes again. <laughs> what did your wife say that gave you this impression? Well, she said Joey was ten years old. He is. <laughs> ten years old? Well, he's a little big for his age. In fact, an hour ago, I had to help my wife lift him out of the bathtub. Mr. Burns, I was going to suggest that you take your wife to a psychiatrist. But now I think you ought to go with her. <laughs> and as for you, young man, my advice to you is stop playing with boats and get married. <laughs> I just found out who that woman was. For a minute, I thought she was one of Gracie's relatives. When I was a little boy, we didn't have any vocational guidance. In my neighborhood, a kid had to grow up and do exactly what his father did. For instance, the kid next door had to learn how to stagger so he could follow in his father's footsteps. Gracie and her ideas. What do I care if he goes into show business? What's wrong with show business? Look at George. I would have answered that question, too. Blanche, I want to shave. I can't get him out of the bathroom. Oh, I'll get him out for you. 
Joey Pearson, you're on next. Ta da! Well, Marty Wooly. <laughs> Keep this up, Joey, and you'll become a patient before you're a doctor. Ta-da! <laughs> Look, Joey, dear, when you go... Oh, for goodness sakes, come here. When you grow up, wouldn't you like to be a doctor? A man that everybody looks up to and respects? Nah, I want to be like Uncle George. I'm certainly glad you and Gracie aren't putting him into the real estate business. Oh, now, wait a minute. He might be a great help. He could answer the telephone around the office. Then you and Casey wouldn't have to stop playing pinochle. <laughs> ah, da. Oh, Joey, now you put down Uncle George's scrapbook. We you know your mother wants you to forget show business. But I am Blanche. I want to be just like Uncle George. <laughs> A telescope is for looking at things miles away. Oh, well, then it's perfect for him. He can look at them without getting near them. <laughs> oh, here he is now. I'll talk to you later. Bob. All right, dear. <sighs> look, Blanche, will you do me a favor? Please keep out of Gracie's half-baked schemes. And wear my shorts. I had to put on long underwear. Shorts <laughs> away. It's too cool to wear them. I don't like long underwear. I want my shorts. Harry Morton, you will wear your long underwear and keep your trap shut. <laughs> Gracie, this is one of our neighbors. We are not her relatives. I don't see why we have to have that kid running in and out of our house all the time. Listen, it wouldn't do you any harm to talk to that little boy. Maybe if someone talked to you when you were a boy, you would have amounted to something today. As a matter of fact, you're right. If someone had told me about the birds and the bees, I wouldn't have married one. <laughs> Ta-da! Say, Blanche, I'm gonna have to wait on the corner for Casey. Will you throw me an apple? I will not. Blanche, throw me an apple. Nope. Gina, think if I hadn't been a Boy Scout, I wouldn't have been married. What? I thought I was helping an old lady across the street. I wound up at the altar with you. Why, you? Thanks, Clarence. I just wanted the apple. <laughs> Little Joey's visit to the Mortons may not keep him from being an actor, but I bet he's convinced he ought to be a bachelor. The Mortons always have their little arguments, but they always patch things up. An eye, a nose, <laughs> an ear. Oh, I don't know whether I'm supposed to hear this or not, but to be on the safe side, you listen and tell me, huh? Well, did you convince Joey he should be a doctor? Gracie, it's useless. I talked to Joey until I was blue in the face. Oh, well, then he's very rude. If he blew in your face while you were talking to him, he should be scolded. <laughs> no, Gracie, you see, the trouble is Joey has seen your swimming pool and the house and everything, and he's a bright boy. He says if being a doctor is so great, why isn't George one? Well, George isn't strong enough. Uh, being a doctor could make you sick. It could make you sick? Well, sure. My nephew, he became a doctor, and he told me that he had to take medicine for four years. <laughs> you know, Gracie, maybe if we could make Joey believe you were broke and didn't own this house, it... Hey, I think I've got an idea. What? I can go upstairs and use some of George's makeup and come down and pretend I'm your landlord and make Joey believe you don't own this house. Well, that ought to do it. You think you'll believe it? Oh, sure. Lots of people don't own this house. Well, I'll get ready. All right. Oh, I'll need a cue when to come down. Look, when you're ready for me to come down, you holler, 
Oh, what will become of us? Oh, what will become of us? That'll be my cue. Okay. And in case I forget it, you holler it. <laughs> Joey, will you come here a minute, please? Okay, Aunt Gracie. Oh, Joey, I've got terrible trouble. Sit down while I pace. What's the trouble, Aunt Gracie? Oh, I can't pay my rent, and our landlord's coming to throw us out. Aunt Gracie, you're broke? Oh, yes, we have a very mean landlord. As a matter of fact, you better hide in the closet. When he comes to throw the furniture out, I don't want you to be on it. <laughs> now, oh, when he gets here, I'll leave the door open so you can hear how mean he is. Oh, what'll become of us? What's going on? Oh, it's nothing. I was just testing to see if there was an echo. An echo? Yes. Uh, no hurry about what will become of us. No echo. Now, he'll be down later. Sit down, Joe. <laughs> uh, I spoke to Dr. Harris. Oh. I spoke to Dr. Harris and tried to borrow some money. Why did you open the closet? Well, it, um, it was getting kind of stuffy in here, and I thought we needed some fresh air. <laughs> you spoke to Dr. Harris? Oh, yes, and tried to borrow some money so we could pay our rent. Who's Dr. Harris? Well, he, he's just a millionaire. Uh, he's a millionaire like all doctors. Millionaire? Mm-hmm. Well, in fact, he's so rich that when he gets a broken leg, he doesn't bother to fix it. He just throws it away. And he wouldn't give you the money for the rent? No. Oh, but don't worry. It isn't the first time we've been thrown out of this house. You mean we're being evicted? Hey, well, it was the first time for that. It's getting a little drafty. I think I'll close the door. Hey, Joey, come out of that. Joey, come on. In the den, I'll be right in. Gracie, why do you want Joey to think we're broke? Well, George, Joey's mother wants him to forget all about show business and be a doctor. Now, he loves you. Go in and talk to him. Okay, I'll convince him to be a doctor. Yes. Where's, uh, where's Harry Von Zell? Oh, wait, I'll call him. Oh, what'll become of us? <laughs> Hello, I am your landlord, and I have... Where is it? It's down on the couch. I am your landlord, and I have some bad news. And a bad makeup, too. You haven't paid your rent, so I'm going to put your furniture out on the street and throw you out in the snow. Snow? We're in California. Well, when I throw, I throw, you know. I'll see you later. Come in. I realize how poor you You know, you Harry, folks... if Joey was under the couch, he would have loved your performance. Oh, well, I should have figured that. Gracie? Yes? Gracie? What? Oh, wonderful news. What? We found the business. Oh, congratulations. Wait a minute. Telegram came for you. Oh, thank you. Yes, sir. Molly and I are taking over a gas station. Oh, wonderful. Now our little Joey can be a doctor. Molly, it's from our agent. He's booked us for five weeks in Chicago. Oh, now we're in show business again. Oh, oh honey. Oh. <laughs> Where's Joey? He's in the den. Uh, George is persuading him to be a doctor. A doctor? Yeah. What's he trying to do? Ruin us? Joey's our whole act. Yeah. Oh, I gotta find Joey. I gotta find Joey. Where is he? A doctor. Gracie, who are they? Uh, the skating Pearsons. We played with them in Akron. Oh. In fact, they introduced me to George. Oh, they did? Mm -hmm, and I'm very glad they did. You know, it would be an awful thing if I, I was living with a stranger all these years. <laughs> yeah, I guess it would. Well, I'll put these props and things upstairs. All right. Goodbye, Gracie, oh, dear. Goodbye, Gracie. Goodbye. 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 And listen to me straight, man. If it weren't for Gracie, you'd still be eating last year's telephone books. Goodbye, Gracie. Goodbye, Joe. What's going on? Oh, well, that's what I'd like to know. Well, you told me to talk him into being a doctor, and I was just going to. Well, it serves you right for mixing in other people's business. What? Oh, I, uh, George Burns, I don't know what will become of us. <laughs> Mrs. Burns, I am your landlord, and I have some bad news. I got bad news for you, too. The show's over. 